All right, here we go. Uh, five, four, split. Let's see how this goes. We got a five point match, speed settings. Let's see if I have any time to talk and play at the same time. Double ones, just make the structure. Four, two. I would come down and then split, probably duplicating the fours. Double threes. Huh. Maybe I make this hit and come down? Yeah, let's try that. Three, five. And then either double hit or play 13, eight. Yeah, that looks all right. Or I just say, just roll. All right, cover and hit on the five. All right, we're back in. Got a little bit of action. Ooh. So what's he going to do? He's going to make the five an anchor, and I'm going to roll double sixes. Nope. <laughs> so... could come all the way around, but I really would like to block their sixes. What if I do like that? Is that too crazy? Just block their sixes. He's going to make the bar, right? And then I do this. prime uh, not making it easy maybe I should have come all the way around with the uh, the outside guy there he did not see it Wow so if he does this should I just double him now Should I just double him now? How's he gonna save this game on his next roll? All right, let's see if this is a cube. It's probably not a cube, but we'll find out soon enough. Maybe he passes. Maybe he doesn't. All right. This is where they always roll double fours. Four five is strong. Wow. Fuck, look at that. So let's just come out and make the point. Let's just hit. Oh, I got hit back. Oh, of course, I'm a fan. Ooh, five one. That's a little terrible. Three one. Ah, here we go. So let's go. Oh, that was forward. Six here, and let's make the bar. Right. Six and make the bar. Let's go four and just hit on the ace. Ace, all right. Whew. And let's bring it in. That was a little, little tension there. A little tension. Nothing. Left. Three of your opponents met on the bar to make you nervous. Let's go five and then four. One, two, no, 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 no. Five, four. One, two, okay. No bad double sixes that way. Five, one. 
Yeah, let's try that. Probably sixes. Five, two, three, trying to stay as flexible as possible without trying to appear like a major donkey. Two, five, five, two, five, two. I'm just gonna go five, two this way. Uh, it might be wrong, but it's not a flexible play. Six, three. this we're gonna lose a shot anyway soon look at this nope all right let's go for the g Whew, you would have got it you would have got it if I stayed on the roof you would have got me some interesting decisions in the first game that i'm not all too sure about i'm not sure about this though uh, the gammon Crawford, just going to try to win this game, don't know why it's frozen, let's refresh this, 5-3 just makes the 3 point for them, double 1's, just going to do this, if I just only roll good numbers it makes matches really easy, 4-3 makes the anchor, the fact that he can find the uh, the bar making, I I'm still gonna make the five prime. I think even though I can't split, I'm just gonna play this two down. The five prime is too strong. He should play two down. Three one makes the six prime. He makes the bar, and I'm gonna try not to crack now. On my next roll. Three one. Or three. Now let's go 3-1 all the way, give ourselves uh, the opportunity to be pointed on, and then the fan. Good thing about this position, though, is that if he shuts me out completely and I'm never entered, I still win, because he's behind the prime. Uh, unfortunately, though, this appears like it won't be the case. Maybe, let's see. He should hit on the 4. And he should hop out. All right. So he's got to creep forward, and I need to roll a two. I said I need to roll a two. Three. Should he slot? Yeah. I mean, he shouldn't hit me. I'm coming forward. And he definitely needs to try to counter prime me. Because at this pace... I'm going to win. Oh, yeah, it's the first story ever. All right. So we can bring this home. 6-3. All right. So, I mean, he's up in the race, but he can't really go anywhere. Can I just do this? Maybe I do this. Let's try that. Do stuff like this. Should I give him six out? I don't feel like I generally want to give people the six out here when they're bored. Five, three. Five, Let's just do this. Four, five. Six, four. Do that for sure, and then we could bring it in or bring it closer. Let's just try a smidge closer. We could do this. All right, let's do that. I'm not sure what's correct there. You know, I just don't want him rolling numbers like six four. Here and he gets to hop back with the, the good stuff. I also don't want to leave shots, which I think I just did. So let's break with this one. No, 
not sure. Of course, I'm going to get hit, and then I'm going to fan. Nope, 5 1. Oh, I said don't hit the bat. Oh, there's the bat I knew was going to happen. All right. Another one. Round two? That just seems a little unsavory. He should just see that guy. Good. And then I want to be 11 and 12 away, which those guys are. So I'm going to stay back there and have him come to Papa. So sixes and sevens. Six. And then I'll save the two here. Ooh, that just seems unfair. Let's just come all the way around. What's happening? Is it frozen again? Let me refresh. Nope. Yeah, that was a pretty sick sequence. Um, who cue the Jeopardy theme music. Maybe he needs to refresh the page. Either that or he has left the building and I will be stranded here for another minute and 19, 18, 17 seconds. Hmm. Oof. Yawn, yawn, yawn. So we're going to get to the analysis after this, uh, provided, yeah, just pr provided I don't fall asleep in the meantime as I wait for this minute to time out. Where have you gone, Oslo City? Let's refresh this again. Make sure I'm not the one who's running out of time. So when I refresh it, it always looks like it goes back to his regular time, but it doesn't. Um, his time is still what it would have been without the refresh. So I know in a few seconds he's going to time out now. And then his PR will be ridiculous because timing out on this site uh, adds to your PR by like um, like a 20 PR timeout, you know. You, play a four then all of a sudden your PR is a, a 24 so we win the match because he let his clock run out and I closed him out and he left okay I played a 2.6 so my decisions must have been all right let's go look at the analysis so one of the great features of this site is that XG is built into it um, sometimes the strength at which it analyzes the, the position isn't isn't quite as strong as the desktop version so you can go into the site and download it and put it into XG and take a look there but let's just take a quick look here and let's look at these decisions so 5-4 split 4-2 made the point double ones makes both points and then I liked his 4-2 and double threes so I wasn't exactly sure, but it just felt right to make the new point and hit and then bring another guy down. I mean, yeah, anything else would have been a tremendous blunder. So his first mistake uh, was was hitting on the ace. Yeah. Yeah, 13-8 was bad too, so it was just cleaning up the blot, playing to the four point. I, I think I would have gotten this wrong as well but i can see why you would want to do that with all of the entering numbers plus a four that hits um it sucks for sure just because you're outboarded three to two i've got the six five four you just have the four point which is why i guess hitting on the ace is also wrong um, because you're just outboarded if i roll an ace it sucks and uh, he got gammon, so uh, that probably came down to, you know, one of these plays where um, I hit one of these extra shots. Oh, 
Where did it go? Let's go back here, review. One here. What's the three-one play here? He played with all the blots, which I thought was was crazy. Because if I just hit one of them, you just get messed up completely. So if you don't want to get hit, the only real safe play is seven six seven four. Um, although I, I might have played, I might have played thirteen nine just because keeping me trapped behind that prime is how I'm going to break, right? The fear of leaving a direct shot in that position is kind of, I mean, it's not fake. If I roll a six, it, it it's not great, right? But if I don't roll a six, you have the opportunity to then make that point and uh, you're only playing with one blot. Um, you know, when you make the other play and you, you play with uh, three blots, you you just lose so many more gamins when I when I roll those combination shots, or it's not it's not even really worth it. Um, and breaking breaking the seven point is is just bad uh, because you don't want my back checkers to have that mobility. You don't want me to be able to just jump out and and run around because in order for those back guys to leave, you need my position to break down. And the way my position breaks down, especially right now where it's it's breaking, is by by holding that point, right? But I um, I of course rolled a number that was safe. Uh, I played six to two and lifted. And then his next play, of course, was a tremendous blunder with the five four. He didn't see that you could extend the prime to make the eight point. Uh, you know, going from a four prime to a five prime in this position is huge. If I don't roll a six next roll, uh, I'm, I'm just coming forward and, and you gain mobility for your back checkers, right? So earlier when I made the double fours play, which I thought was interesting, that was my whole idea, right? I could run the other guy around and like maybe make the nine point and just gain freedom for that guy. But in reality, all I want to do is keep those back checkers from moving. And so for me, the priority was to make the nine point. Uh, so I came down with three because I don't want to leave a blot on the 13 point. And, and then I just played 10 to six. So I wasn't playing with an extra blot. So as we go forward, we have the six five play, which is obvious. You just run around his double fives play um, was. Yeah. Uh, like playing to the ace is is just never great you know your position is breaking anyway I, I know it seems safer because you're not leaving a direct shot but it, it, it really hinders your ability to attack me when I do leave with the other checkers when you have just put everything on the ace right it's just a dead checker that never gets to be used again right so let's say you play all three checkers to the two point and then you play 13 eight and then I choose to leave with like a six or a four, right? I didn't roll the five to hit you. I just rolled a six or a four. Now those other checkers can be used to attack me on the three, right? You didn't put the checkers completely out of play. And so they still have potential in the game. And also with the blot on the deuce point, it's not the end of the world, you know? You can hit me and then hit back and, and maybe you roll a four and I fan forever, which as we all know happens quite often. All right, so I did correctly double here. Um, it was close, double no double, you know? But when you put all the checkers behind the anchor like that and your position has no flexibility, there is no long-term future for your game here. Um, okay you can take because you are up in the race 31 pips I understand that right uh, but you don't like it you don't like it so much I thought that potentially he was gonna pass so we took and uh, obviously 3-2 safety to checker 5-4 great play running off the anchor 
double fours. All right, I have to hop out and then make the two point, which I did. Um, you know, just keeping pressure on the guys that are on his midpoint and obviously not breaking down my structure. I don't want him to roll a four and leave. Three, one, five, one. You know, you, you just have to hit, right? There's, there's no trying to play safe. His board's already broken down. You just hit him and you try to live. The only question is how you hit him, whether or not you play 8, 7, 8, 3, and you lift the guy, or you just play 9 to 3. Not lift, but you know, play to the bar. So he hits. I don't get to enter. 5, 1. He doesn't get to leave, which I was very happy about. And this happens, so I hit. He didn't get to move, and then all of a sudden we see the closeout happens. I had a mistake here with the... Okay, so the rest of these plays I thought were interesting, right? I'm just trying to avoid uh, rolling double sixes, right? Or I'm trying to avoid bad things happening when I roll double sixes. So this an 8 to 5. The 5-2 play here. 21 to 15 runs around the corner. 5-4 here, just trying to avoid bad double sixes with the 5-1. You see, if you make the 5-1 play the other way, I believe that double sixes leaves a shot. So we're not about that life. Uh, don't want to start giving him extra, extra life. So this 5-2 wasn't as good. So I'm supposed to play the two in and the five off. So often this is the case uh, when their board is already broken down. You know, you take the chances because I'm I'm just assuming that this just wins more backgammons, which is why they want me to start ripping checkers off right away. Um, okay, well. We can see the numbers down here. This play just wins almost 80% gammons and 7% back gammons. And the other plays that could possibly be made, like my play, which was a 4% error, um, it, it wins the most games, but only by a half a percent. And you lose down on 1% of gammons and you lose out on 3% of back gammons. So yeah, most of the equity that I lose by making this play is by is by missing out on three percent um, on backgammons. Huh. Understandable, you know. If his board was made completely, I think this play would be right, just because it wins the most games. Um, and and I just find it to be the safest play. You just don't leave many shots, which I like. All right, continue. Everything else was fine. All right, let's go to game two. Five three makes the point. Double ones makes the points again. Uh, six two runs out. Yeah, I get to hit and slot the nine point. Four three. Obviously, he has to make the 21 point. Four two. So I don't get to split, right? With my back checkers because it's blocked. So. Uh, the only option I really saw was 13, 11, 13, 9. And I, I, I guess you can just play 24, 29, 7, 2. I mean, this was my only other option. I believe, indeed, it is the only other option um, because 24, 18 just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but, you know, when you go from a 4 prime to a 5 prime and when the guy rolls an ace, it doesn't really kill you. You know, I just don't want him leaving, so... I make the prime. 5-4. Uh, Obviously, it's just two down. 3-1. You know, uh, you got to notice that it makes the 10 point. Keeps him from leaving here. And then 3-1. Okay, so I, I thought about this for a second. And I thought about 24-23, 24-21. And the reason why you might play 24-23 is when... He points on you and attacks you with the the checker on the 17 point. You get you get sixes as a return shot on the way back in. 
but then I, I decided to ultimately go against it because um, I wanted fives out, right? Like stepping all the way up to the 20 point gives me, you know, sixes, fives, and fours. And well, you know, I have my fives out, I have my sixes out, my four step up, the checker on the 20, 24 from 23 does attack back on the, okay, no, no, I can see that. All my fives and sixes and fours still play. And then I get the extra defensive value of when he points on me with the guy on the side. Okay, no, no, I get it now. Makes sense. Something to keep in mind. Um, so he does point on me with that roll. Uh, and not only do I roll one six, I roll two of them. So I wouldn't have been able to hit him anyway. Four one. Obviously just makes the bar. I don't get the move. Five one, four one, six two. Was this play? Thirteen seven six four. He just hits me, of course. You know, it's the only thing you can do to just stop me from leaving. You know, there's an opportunity for him. Uh, when I land just on the ace and the deuce to just make that point and counter prime me, you know, like what do you have to lose at this score? Absolutely nothing. And it's right at every score because how else are you going to get my prime to break? Six, four, four, one, five, three, three, two. So this three, two play I knew was bad. Um, so seven, four, six, four. Okay. Um, so obviously we can't just hit on the two point. This doesn't, this doesn't solve any problems, right? And in a prime versus prime position, your prime value is what matters in being able to hold a prime. So trying to fill the gap on the four point is huge and trying to keep a prime as long as possible to try to get me to break down is huge. And just playing seven to two hit doesn't really accomplish that goal. Um, so seven, four, five, three was an option. Um, eight, six, eight, five was an option. I mean, obviously this is just the safest option, but it doesn't, you know, but it does give me the sixes out. Um, but seven, four, six, four is really creative. I, I like that. Six, three. Yeah. I mean, okay. Uh, you got to cover. Eight, five, eight, two. What did he play? Eight, two, five, two. Okay. Yeah, I mean, why would you take the spare checker from the five point and put it on the two point? Doesn't seem to, to really help anything out. You know, you want to use those checkers to make the four point. Um, let's just move on down. Three one. So he played seven six seven four. I mean, l lifting that checker. Lifting that checker doesn't really doesn't really accomplish anything if you're gonna hit. So eight five to two one. So he's just waiting for me to crack. He's not even hitting. At all with this number. Eight. Ah, interesting. So what do you what do you want me to roll? You you want me to roll? Uh, huh? Really? That's interesting. Let's head down even more. Let's find my next mistake. Five three. Okay. So I thought, yeah. I mean, often in these positions, I try to just play them to where I don't have to break the prime for a while, right? So 
me playing in. I don't know how some of these numbers play. I'd like to play behind and keep the prime as long as possible. But I guess there's some sequence of numbers where this is just not the best. Good to note. So he rolls double sixes. He can't move. Five, two. I play into the six point. Uh, five, three, eight, five, eight, three, right? So a part of me was thinking about breaking the back, right? But when the guy's board is crunched, right, you're losing in the race, you really don't want to give him that miracle double six. I mean, he could roll the miracle double fours as well, but that doesn't hurt as bad as the miracle double six. What you really want to do is start breaking like the seven and the eight and the nine points. You want to start making the points behind him as you catch up in the race. And hopefully he can't escape with anything. And by the time he does have to leave with one guy, you get to pounce on him, right? And just shut him out because his board is already broken down to a three-point board. So that's really the strategy in these sorts of positions. 5-2, um, 5-3. Yeah, right. So you just slot the ace and make the point, right? You want to keep the points as long as you can. Doing anything else is an error. Six, four, uh, you know, similar idea, right? Um, but obviously, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to break the seven like that and start leaving those spare checkers that want to attack the guy that when he eventually leaves on the four, uh, you don't want to have that spare checker behind because it just ends up being a dead checker. So you break the nine doing anything else is an error. Three, one, he just plays forward. Now these double ones. I wasn't sure about. Um, so my play was a 1% error. Yeah. And I thought about the right play. It's for the same reasons. It's just like, okay, when he rolls a 6-4, would you rather be on the 9 point? Or would you rather be back on the 10 point, right? So 6-4 forces him to, to, to run off the anchor from here, right? Uh, and then you have your your sixes, your twos, and your ones to just attack attack the hell out of them. Uh, the reason why the plays are close is because you know sometimes he rolls a small number next, and then you know you end up leaving a shot and he escapes with both, and and, and you can lose that way, right? Um, it's unlikely, but by coming closer, it ends up being easier to clear the point later. Which, you know, obviously is why the plays are so close. But yeah, I mean, it's just thematic. You cover the ace, you lift the seven, you give yourself the spares to attack when he has to leave. Um, log double twos so he doesn't get to go anywhere. Five, three. Okay. So I was running out of time here. Or am I making an excuse? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Um... So what did I play? I played nine to one. Yeah, that's silly. I know I need to stay with the other guy. Um, ah, just break the six point. Yeah, I don't have to leave any shots at all. Maybe if he had a blot in his home board, I could. But no, I don't have to leave a shot at all. Six, three, six, one. Yeah, I mean, clearly, right? If we look at this position, uh, even though it looks like he's ahead in the race, a lot of his racing lead is just wastage. Um, you know, all the checkers on the ace and the deuce are going to be pulled off, not with ones and twos, but with like fours and fives and threes later on. So, you know, he's wasting pips with every one of those rolls. So this pip count is a fallacy. I'm actually up in the race by a lot. It's going to take him a while to get around if he gets around at all because... Uh, what's likely is that he leaves, I hit him, I close him out. So much so that I win 75% of the games after making the correct play. Um, making my play, I only win 72, so obviously that's worse. Um, you know, this play here wins less gammons than my play, uh, but not enough to compensate for the 3% extra losses. And at this score, I can't win a gammon anyway. So clearly, it just makes it more wrong. Uh, for money, the plays might be a little closer. But, you know, breaking the 6 point would still be right for money. All right. Good to note. Come down. Come down. 
got an error here, 5-2. Um, so what did he do? So, so Ah, he broke the point. Yeah, you don't really want to break your points. And, I mean, you're giving me... When you come to the 11 point, right, you're giving me direct 6s plus 7s anyway, right? So all direct 6s are, are 17 numbers right away, right? Like... Not all direct numbers, but all sevens, sorry, all sixes plus combinations that hit a six or 17 numbers plus the sevens that don't include a six because six is hit already. So I already have 21 hitting numbers if you stop on the 11 and you're breaking your third point, which just makes your position that much worse. So by just coming all around to the nine point, uh, you may be giving me a few extra shots, but you know it, it does make it easier to safety this checker when missed on the next roll too, and you're still keeping a little bit of defensive uh, power there by, by maintaining a three point board, right? Uh, there's the chance I hit you, right? And you come back in and you hit me later and then I fan on a three-point board it is much more likely for me to fan on a three-point board than it is on a two-point board um, board strength matters in every position and then I had this 6-2 and I lifted uh, wow it's bad I should slot because of the blot yes 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 of course you know being able to recognize both sides of the board, um, even when you're playing blitz, like over the board in a slow game or in a cash game where there's no clock, maybe you notice this play. It's much easier to notice it then, but recognizing the strength of this play is huge. It is easily the best play to win um, by a lot, right? So here I win 76% of games by slotting. The guy's got a two-point board with the blot on the 22-point. What is really going to go wrong? Even if he hits me, so what? Right? Maybe I get three guys on the roof and I just lock up everything. Um, this play right here actually win loses 4% more games. It loses 4% more games. Wow. So I win more games. In a money game, I would win more gammons. I would also lose a few more gammons. I would lose less gammons with these other plays on my own. But like, how am I ever getting gammoned in these positions, you know? So I, I go from 2% gammons to 4% gammons, which... Uh, I, I don't, I don't see, I, I mean, okay, it's possible I could lose a gammon, right? But like the sequence would be so wild, it's, it'd be absolutely ridiculous. So I just win so many more games just by slotting, right? Because I get to just potentially roll a three right away. Um, and if he hits me, there's the opportunity for me to then roll a three right away to hit the other guy and have him potentially fan on my board. And there's the potential I just roll one of the... Uh, 6x numbers that hits the guy back on the 14, right? So clearly I can see that too. And that is it. So in this game, we, um, we played pretty well. Played a 2.6. All right. Uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you can, if you made it this far. Uh, and if you didn't, I don't really care. <laughs> All right. Have a good one.